My friends, welcome to Aslan Speaks, episode 10, The Ten Commitments of God. Let me repeat that, The Ten Commitments of God. In my years of seeking knowledge and wisdom, I discovered that certain knowledge and wisdom doesn't come to you by accident. That's right, certain things don't come to you by accident. Certain knowledge and wisdom comes to you when you're ready for it. It comes to you when you have done enough soul work or inner work on yourself. Certain knowledge and wisdom comes to you when you have awakened your consciousness enough to handle the information that comes to you. That's right. Certain stuff doesn't come to you until you're consciously awakened enough for it. I'll use this example out of my own life. There was a certain book, book called The Celestian Prophecy written by James Redfield. This book was sitting on my bookshelf for years. And for years I ignored this book. And then one day I got the urge to read the book. And the information contained in that book changed my life. But you see, if I would have read that book earlier, or in the early previous years, I would have never truly understood the meaning behind the book, because I wasn't consciously awake enough to understand it. So, it wasn't until I was spiritually awake enough, or consciously awake, until I had the urge to read the book, and I read the book, and the book changed my life. You see, a lot of people are still, still spiritually and consciously asleep. So certain information or wisdom doesn't come to them because certain information or wisdom would shatter that person's reality if they receive the information when they're not ready for it. You see this all the time in life where certain information is presented to somebody and they flip out on it and say, you know, even if that information is true, let's say some of this information that is presented to a certain person is based on facts and truth, but to them, it's not true, and they're not ready for it, and it makes them spiral out of control. So I pose the idea. Yep, I pose the idea that God or universal intelligence doesn't bring you things in your life unless you're ready for it. So the idea is that God doesn't bring us things until we're ready for it. Or until we're spiritually awake or consciously awake. So I want to share another example. This is out of my own life once again. Years ago when I was in my early 20s, I bought a Powerball ticket. I never really played Powerball before. And I didn't know all the rules and like how to win or cash in your prizes. I didn't know anything like that. It was like my second or third time I ever played the, the game. To make a long story short... I ended up getting five matching numbers and I was ecstatic guys. I was looking up on the computer. I'm like, I got five numbers. I'm like, all I need is the number, the six, the Powerball. And I'm, I win all the, the millions and millions of dollars. But long story short, uh, the sixth number, the Powerball number, I didn't ma match, but I had five matching numbers, but I got the last six number. I didn't get that. And here I thought I lost. So I threw that ticket out. Yep, I threw that ticket out, you guys. And a month later, a friend of mine bought a Powerball ticket and then ended up explaining all the rules to me. And I discovered that if I would have kept that ticket, oh yeah, the, kept the ticket that had five matching numbers, I would have won over a million dollars. Yep, I threw out a million dollar ticket, my friends. Kind of crazy to think about. Well, upon reflecting on that experience in my life, I always wondered why losing a million dollars happened to me. Upon reflection, I came up with this idea, or I came up with the idea that at that time in my life, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready to win a million dollars at that time. I was young and dumb. 
I would have spent that money foolishly and unwisely, and it probably would have caused more harm than good. And it also would have distracted me from the path that I was on of self-mastery and awakening. You know, if I would have won that million dollars, I would have forgot all about uh, self-mastery and awakening. And I would have went off on a hiatus of spending a spending spree and been distracted. So you see, what I'm trying to explain is certain things don't happen to us until we're ready for them. So I wasn't ready for that million dollars. There's no such thing as coincidences. Universal intelligence or God does all things through him. We are all God's children and when and we're rewarded when we're spiritually and consciously awake enough. Ask yourself what brought you to this YouTube channel. Yeah, ask yourself what brought you to this YouTube channel. Was it your intuition? Was it me, the host? What inspire you to check out this video? If you're watching this video, it's probably because a higher power wanted you to watch this video. It's probably because the information in this video will trigger you in some shape or form. Yeah, so probably some information in this video will trigger you in some shape or form. It might help you along the path of awakening. So, my friends... I say this in all my videos, or most of my videos. It is time for you to awaken. Awaken your consciousness. Learn to start listening to your higher self or your intuition. Start listening to your gut into like gut feeling or gut emotion inside you. Because normally it doesn't steer you wrong. That's your higher self or God or in, your, whatever you want to call it, Holy Spirit speaking to you. Trust your intuition. Now, I will get to the main message of this video. I will share with you the Ten Commitments of God. The Ten Commitments come from a book called Conversations with God, an Uncommon Dialogue written by Neil Donald Walsh. Let me repeat that. The Ten Commitments of God comes from the book Conversations with God, an Uncommon Dialogue, written by Neil Donald Walsh. Walsh began in this section near the middle of his book in chapter 5, so around chapter 5-ish, in the middle of the book, he discusses the Ten Commandments. Or, so this is where it starts off. He discussed over the best spiritual path to follow in order to find God. Yeah, what is the best, best path to follow, follow in order to find God? As many may call it, God answers began with this idea. You ready for this idea? Every heart which earnestly asks, which is the path to God, is shown. Each is given a heartfelt truth. Come to me along the path of your heart. Not through the journey of your mind. You will never find me in your mind. In order to truly know God... You have to be out of your mind. So be out of your mind through the heart. So I t there's many little quotations I'm about to discuss through this book, but I will limit these quotations from the book to one the one that appears on the pages 96 and 97 of the book, uh, Conversations with God. We all know the Ten Commandments by heart. Yep, we know all the Ten Commandments by heart, but th these are going to be the Ten Commitments. In the spirit of understanding... God said, as I came to Moses, even as I come to you, now with a divine covenant, an everlasting promise, a sure and certain commitment, how can I be sure? Yes, how can we be sure? Moses asked plain, plainly, because I told you so. I said, you had the word of God. And the word of God was not a commandment, but a covenant. Then there, then the, blah, 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 right? Tongue twister again. Sorry for the mess up. Then there are the Ten Commitments. So basically, in this book, he's talking about that God didn't really come up with the Ten Commandments. That man manipulated the Ten Commandments. And that really, the Ten Commandments are actually the Ten Commitments. 
Use your discernment, my friends. If this information speaks to you, it speaks to you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So here are the Ten Commitments. You guys are ready for this? You shall know that you have taken the path of God, and you shall know that you have found God, for there will be signs. These indications, these change you in you. Yeah, so there's indications and signs that make changes in you. So commitment number one. You shall love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. I love that phrase, so let's repeat it. You shall love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And there shall be no other God set before me. No longer will you worship human love or success, money or power, nor any any symbol therefore or thereof. You will set aside these things as childs like as children set aside their toys. Not because they are unworthy, but because you have outgrown them. And you shall know you have taken the path to God because ready commitment number two. You shall not bleh, you shall not use the name of God in vain. Yes, you shall not use the name of God in vain. Nor will you call upon me for frivolous things. You will understand the power of my words and of thoughts. And you would not think of invoking the name of God in an ungodly manner. You shall not use my name in vain because you cannot. For my name is the great I am. Let me repeat that. For my name is the great I am. And it is never used in vain. That is without result, nor can it ever be. And when you have found God, you shall know this. And I shall give these other signs as well. Commitment three. You shall remember to keep a day for me. And you shall call it holy. This is so that you do not long stay in your illusion. But cause yourself to remember and, and cause yourself to remember and what who you are. And then you shall call every day the Sabbath and every moment holy. I like that phrase. You are in an illusion, my friends. And once you know God, you get out of that illusion. Commitment four. You shall honor your mother and father, and you will know that you are the son of God. When you honor your father, mother, God, and all that you say or do or think, and even as you so honor the mother, father, God, and your father and mother on earth, for they have given you life, so too will you honor everyone. Commitment 5. You know you have found God when you observe that you will not murder, that is, willfully kill without cause. For while you will understand that you cannot end each other's life in an event, all life is internal. Yes, all life is internal. You will not choose to terminate any particular incarnation nor change any life energy from one form to another. Without the most sacred justification, you, your new reverence for life will cause you to honor all life forms. Yes, honor all life forms including plants, trees, and animals, and, and, do, and, and to impact them only when it is for the highest good. And these other signs will I send you also, that you may know you are on the path. Commitment 6. You will not defile, defile the purity of love, dishonesty, or deceit, for this is adulterous. Let me repeat that. You will not defile the purity of love with dishonesty or deceit, for this is adulterous. I promise you, when you have found God, you shall not commit this adultery. Commitment 7. You will not take a thing that is not your own, nor cheat, nor covet, covet nor harm another to have anything. For this would be to steal. I promise you, when you shall, when you have found God, you shall not steal, nor shall you. Commitment 8. Say a thing that is not true, and thus bear false witness, nor shall you. So commitment 8 says, uh, basically, don't 
lie. Don't bear false witness. Always speak the truth. Commitment nine. Covet your neighbor's spouse, for you would want your neighbor's for you. Why would you want your neighbor's spouse when you know all things are your spouse? Let me repeat that because I kind of jumbled it up a little bit. Covet your neighbor's spouse, for why would you want your neighbor's spouse when you know all others are your spouse? So what at the end of that, when he says, when you know all others are your spouse, that means everyone is you or everyone is one with each other. So why would you want someone else's when you have everything else at your fingertips? Lastly, commitment 10. Covet your neighbor's goods, for why would you want your neighbor's goods? When you know that all goods can be yours and all your goods belong to the world. So what that means when you know all good goods are yours, that means anything can be at your fingertips. You're children of God. If you know and have faith, God will always provide. So why would you want to take anybody else's stuff if you know, knowingly know spiritually that God will always provide, that you can have anything you want, and that everything that you have also belongs to the world? So you will know that you have found the path of God when you see these signs. Does any of these signs speak out to you? Does any of these commitments of God speak out to you and speak to your soul? For I promise that no one will truly seek God shall any longer do these things. It would be impossible to continue in such behavior. Yeah, some powerful stuff, my friends. So I want to iter iterate... Once again, from this book, this book comes from The Conversation with God, The Uncommon Dialogue, and it's written by Neil Walsh. The Ten Commitments really spoke to my soul when I discovered them. That is why I was divinely inspired to share these Ten Commitments with you. Now, they may speak to you or they may not. My friends, it's up to you what you want to be. That's right. What do you want to be? It's up to you. You can choose to stay in the, and stay in slumber and asleep and continue to be distracted from God. You know, so many people are asleep and they choose to be distracted from God and they choose not to wake up. Or you could choose to wake up and awaken to God. God is with all of us, for we are all his children. That's right, we are all of God's children. It matters not if his children are awake or asleep because he loves us all equally. But I encourage you to wake up. So, my friends, God bless you and amen. And if you like this video, you know the routine. Like and subscribe. Thank you. That's the Ten Commitments of God.